My name's Ian Herman. I graduated from Halebury in 1983 and I'm currently the Chief Operating Officer of Grand Thornton Australia. The balance between sport and, and study was always a difficult one. I really enjoyed the sporting side because it came more naturally to me, but I had to work really hard at my studies. In year 12, the balance between deciding sciences versus business was pretty simple. I was no good at, at science, so I found that extremely difficult, and as a kid, I liked to do things that I was reasonably good at. My dad ran a small business of three people, and each Christmas I would work on the factory floor, working some of the machines. My father had impressed on me that no matter how well I may play football, I must have a career. So therefore took the studies on, uh, on economics and bachelor of business. The three years between school and ultimately Carlton were at Collegians. There were AFL clubs that were interested and I did two pre-seasons with Hawthorne. At each of those two pre-seasons, Alan Jeans would bring me aside and I could see that my name was on the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side. And, um, and they had plenty of players of my nature and skill and attributes, so please enjoy the amateurs. 1986 was a watershed year looking back because effectively what it did was give me another chance. I didn't realise at the time, but playing well in that grand final, kicking five with my brother, gave me an opportunity or reason for my coach to present me to the Carlton Footy Club, Ian Collins, who he knew personally, to say, have a look at this guy and give him a chance. Walking into Carlton, had that air of here I go again to give it another go after having tried it twice at Hawthorne. The news uh, I'd made the list came from Robert Walls and the weight of responsibility and the expectation built even greater when they bestowed on me the number 25, one of the most famous jumpers of the Carlton Football Club. My first game was the Queen's Birthday Weekend 1987, playing against Melbourne in front of 50,000. I remember coming on to the ground, kicking a goal. It was something that I dreamt of. I went on to play 62 games, 48 with Carlton, 14 with Richmond. My most memorable game as a Navy Blue, playing in a night game against Geelong. Gary Ablett Sr saw fit to hit David Glasgow and I saw fit to make amends and with that Gary Ablett hit my elbow and, and went down. But notwithstanding that, having the year that I had, which I'd hit Gary Ablett at the start of the year, played three games, from then on I kept an eye on what I should be doing after football. I always kept that perspective as to in case football finishes, what should I do next? I was working in Arthur Anderson, working full time. I was amongst two of the best organisations, one in football, one in work, to fulfil my aspirations in both career and football. But that came with the expectation that there were no leniencies, you had to perform, and the expectations and the standards were very high. I'd had knee reconstruction, a few injuries, dislocations, and, and my best football was behind me. Once I finished football, the opportunities became really uh, clear. I was promoted the following year to the next level in the organisation, and a few years later was promoted to partner at Arthur Anderson. I felt that after 12 years and then getting promoted to partner that my career was pretty much entrenched. In 2002, through circumstances of global organisation when the Enron scandal unfolded and Arthur Anderson became in, indicted uh, and therefore had to cease trading, I could hear, see and feel the pain for many of us as what we'd lived, driven, aimed for was being taken away and dissipating. At that time I was in charge of 50 people running a service line. 
I was told that I was unable to join EY through global conflicts. My business was actually part of a, a non-compete business that they'd sold called Capgemini a few years earlier. So I actually had to find a new home for 50 people in six weeks. That engendered an enormous amount of responsibility because they had families that were depending on their income and they wanted to know whether they got a job. Having this responsibility and it created one of the most memorable and most satisfying achievements in my career. And I'm pleased to say after searching opportunities and the like, uh, I and 49 of us moved to William Bach in 2002 to continue our careers. We didn't lose an employee, didn't lose a client, and we continued on in our business. We built that and I became managing partner uh, after five years. In, in 2007, I was voted in as the lead managing partner for the Melbourne office. And having uh, taken on that role, I decided that I think the future of accounting needed organisations that were integrated, part of a national firm with international brand. And so that Melbourne office of William Buck left William Buck and became part of Grant Thornton in 2008, where I've been ever since. At Grand Thornton, I'm the Chief Operating Officer. I report to the CEO and part of the national leadership team. I'm responsible for mergers and acquisitions, the strategy for the firm, uh, the IT transformation, the workforce transformation to Agile. We're the sixth largest organisation in Grand Thornton. Grand Thornton has over 40,000 people in over 130 countries globally, and I've been able to play a role in the global uh, IT strategy and various projects globally. What we're seeing is that advisory firms have to move from understanding um, the basics to really understanding the journey of an organisation, what their strategies are, what their priorities are, and bring all the information that's now so readily available into a point of advice as to what matters for an organisation. Whether leadership comes uh, naturally or you, you build it is, is always a question I get asked. And it's, um, I think it's built um, in terms of the opportunities that you have and the experiences through those opportunities create the confidence, create your resilience, create your character. Do I carry stress and, uh, and worry about my role? When my father died of a heart attack at 59, it gave me a reality check that it's not all about business. And now with my family, I really work hard of keeping that balance in place. Having a daughter uh, at the school gives me a great sense that she's in a wonderful environment and is going to be given every opportunity to excel, both academically, uh, from an art point of view, from a drama point of view. I just hope that um, my kids take the opportunity to make the most of what they have. Um, and if they do that, it should stand them in good stead for, for career or whatever they do later in life.